Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort. Ye comfort ye, verily, verily, my people Israel, saith to your God. Speak comfortably. He's the subject, comfort. To Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. Millennium. Tribulation, for she has received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. First advent. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Second advent. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low, the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Millennium, tribulation, first advent, second advent. How on earth did they see Calvary? Now, we got an interesting thing here. We're in Isaiah chapter 40. There is a break at Isaiah chapter 40. At Isaiah chapter 40, it's part two. 39, then 40. And just happened to have a break in the Bible of the Gospels at the 40th book. And at the 40th book, the chapter 40, we see John the Baptist showing up. Now, I didn't say the New Testament, did I? Because the New Testament does not begin with the Gospel of Matthew. Because Hebrew says the Testament is at the death of the testator. you got to go through all of Matthew until you come to the chapter where it says that Jesus gave up the ghost. And that moment that Jesus dies, now you have the New Testament. You got to go through all the, the, the Gospel of Mark to when Jesus dies. Then you have the New Testament. You got to go through all the Gospel of Luke. And when Jesus dies, then you have the New Testament. You got to go all the way through the Gospel of John to Jesus dies. Then you have the New Testament. When you come to, the, to Malachi... Okay, you got Malachi. And you come to the end of Malachi. And if you got a section between Malachi and Matthew, okay, my page is stuck. Somewhere I'm trying to see if this Bible has it. This Bible doesn't have it. Four, yeah, this Bible doesn't have it. Oh. If your Bible says between Malachi and Matthew, the New Testament, it's wrong. This Bible doesn't have it. So when you're running to Malachi, and you're running to Matthew in your church for doctrine, you're wrong. That's Old Testament. That's the law. And even Jesus himself said the law and the prophets were unto John the Baptist. And we are in a particular age, I don't know, when you have the life of Jesus, because there are people who died during the time that Jesus was in ministry, but they didn't stay dead. They were resurrected. Were there other people that died? As far as what I read in the scriptures, he even set the disciples out to go. One of the things was resurrection of the dead, and that includes Judas. So, as I said, there's 66 books in the Bible. There's a break between the Old Testament and the Gospels, and that break shows up between Isaiah 39 and chapter 40. How interesting. And in chapter 40, at the Gospels, not the New Testament, you have John the Baptist showing up. 
But look what you got again. Verse 2, you got the millennial. Verse 2, you got Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period. Verse 3, you got the first advent. Verse 4, you got the second advent. How on earth did you see Calvary? And in verse 3, it's not even Calvary. It's the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. <clears throat> scripture with scriptures, my friend. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. That's both first advent and second advent. All flesh shall see it together. All right, first advent. Did the North Americans see them? Unlike the, the, the dictation of Joseph Smith and the morons that Jesus came over to North America to a bunch of people that archaeology can't find and places they can't find in history. No, John chapter 1 says he came unto his own. That's second advent. And see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The Lord said it, it'll happen. The voice said, Is that the voice of verse 3? Cry. I don't mean tears, that means speak out. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. You find that in James chapter 1 and 1 Peter chapter 1. Epistles written to Israel, not the church. Now you can spiritualize the Gospels, you can spiritualize James and Peter, but doctrinally they're not for the church. All flesh is grass, and all the goodness thereof is as the flower of the field. Paul says there is none good that do there is none that doeth good, no not one. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth. Life comes and life goes. Because the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit of the Lord, bloweth upon it. Surely the, the people is grass. So grass is a type of people. The grass withereth, dies up. The flower fades, dies up. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Jesus said very, very, I mean, very, very, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. That's what Jesus said. O Zion, that's Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings. You know what good tidings is? That's the gospel. Gospel means good tidings. <coughs> Get thee into a high mountain. Paul and the scriptures speak about how grew the defeat of them that published the great tidings. Oh, Jerusalem is a high mountain that bringeth good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength. There's no publication that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And yet Jesus went about preaching the gospel, and it wasn't the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. They haven't had it yet, because he's walking around, breathing, talking. He's preaching the gospel of the kingdom of the Jews. And I had one foolish Christian who taught Sunday school, oh, there's only one gospel. And I had to rebuke him. I said, there's only one gospel. I said, John the Baptist came preaching the gospel. Jesus came preaching the gospel. How can Jesus preach the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection when he's alive? I never thought of that. Then shut up. Being quite harsh. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. 
Jesus went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And he went up and down from Jerusalem. When it says Jesus went up to Jerusalem, Jesus came down from Jerusalem, because Jerusalem's a mountain. Lift up thy voice with strength. Isaiah will say later, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and, and, and show or declare to my people their transgressions. I've got that laminated. So when I preach on the street, you're so loud. And I'll bring out that lamination. It's quote from Isaiah chapter 1. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and declare to my people, which would be Israel, but I'm spiritualizing it, my, their transgressions. See, you can spiritualize. But spiritualize doesn't make good doctrine. And good doctrine doesn't really make a good spiritual application. Be forewarned. We go out. Many do. The wages of sin is death. We use that for preaching to the lost people. Doctrinally, Romans 6 is to the Christian. We are spiritualizing it when we're using it for the lost. Now, don't nail me down. Oh, you can't use Matthew and you can't use Mark. You can't. Yes, you can. I'm studying the Gospel of John as a Bible study. We're studying the book of Isaiah, which shows I am not Paul only. But you've got to rightly divide the scriptures. Scriptures has three applications. Historic, it happened. Doctrine, it is written to this specific people, place, event. And spiritual or spiritualize the application to the Christian. And we've done much spiritual application and we've done much of the doctrinal application. Lift up, lift it up, lift up your voice. Be loud. You know what the world hates? A loud Christian. I know. I got a loud voice. I preach on the street. I wish he wasn't so loud. Preachers need to be loud. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Yes, for the first advent. But they didn't pay attention. They didn't listen. They didn't hear. Second Advent, they will hear. It's both Advents. They look forward to Calvary. Say unto the city, Behold, there's your God. And upon the cross of Jesus, this is Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Did they believe? They did? Who put Peter and James and John into prison? Who did it please Herod to grab hold of Peter and put him in jail on Easter around the time of Passover? The Jews. If the Jews looked forward to the Calvary, why weren't they there saying, all right, three days and three nights, the tomb was empty? Oh, they looked forward to the Calvary. Paul says that Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures. Oh, and he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The death, the burial, and the resurrection according to the scriptures. Why weren't they waiting for him at the empty tomb if they saw Calvary? Behold, the Lord God, that's Jesus, will come with a strong hand, second advent, and his arm shall rule for him, second advent. Behold, his reward is with him. The reward is you're going to get the promised land, second advent. His work before him. What's his work before him? 
He's dividing the nation between the, between the sheep and the goats. He shall lead his flock like a shepherd. How many principal people did Jesus have on this earthly ministry? Twelve. One betrayed him. One denied him. And one was at the cross. Where was the other nine? When he comes at the second advent, the shepherd, the king of kings, the lord of lords, he's going to have the church behind him. And he's going to gather Israel, what we believe, some believe, <coughs> tell Petra. May he be guiding the nation of Israel through the highway, the king's highway, into the promised land, just like Joshua. And his sheep will be Israel. As he said in John chapter 10, I am the great shepherd. The sheep know my voice. He shall gather the lambs in his arms. And that's where the Catholics got the picture. You see, you know, Jesus there, he's holding the, the lamb in his arms. Uh, Italian Jesus. Jesus is not Italian. I've seen that picture as a Catholic. You'll find it in Catholic Bibles. Jesus was Jew, means he's short, brown, with probably a big nose. Not that big. But that's the characteristics of Jews. And carry them in his bosom, like John laid on the bosom of Jesus and heard his heart beat. And shall gently lead those that are with the young. He couldn't lead them as a baby to the first advent. He couldn't lead them at 30 years old going into his ministry. He couldn't guide them upon the cross. He was nailed to the cross. He had to suffer and die according to the scriptures. He had to be resurrected three days and three nights according to the scriptures. Then he got the keys of death and hell. Then he released the captives captive. Then he seated at the right hand of the Father. Then he got the power. And got all that was under his foot. And all that was placed under him. And waiting for that moment that, to come and get his church. And waiting for the seven years of the tribulation period. And then waiting for, all right, mount up on a horse. Let's go get him. Let's go set up the kingdom. Now we're going to stop right there and pick up the rest of the chapter next time.